The Blue Jays dip their toe into free agency, adding a veteran bat to the lineup as Justin Turner inks a one-year deal. Hey, everyone. Welcome into Long Ball. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Blue Jays writer Rob Longley. And Rob, since the Shohei Otani saga, it's been a slow burn for the Blue Jays in free agency. However, with spring training just a few weeks away, the dominoes are starting to fall. And the latest is Justin Turner signing a one-year deal with the Jays. What do you make of the signing and how do you think he fits into the puzzle? Yeah, Rob, we were certainly starting to wonder if, if anything was going to happen. I mean, I suppose that on one sense, there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of free agents still on the table and you, you had to figure the Jays would get one or more of them. And, and they finally sprung into some action here. And I think, you know, overall, um, in isolation, it, it's, a, it's a good acquisition. You, you've got a guy who's um, a veteran. You've got a guy who's a proven hitter. You've got a guy who may be 39 years old, but he's still hit. 23 home runs last year for the Boston Red Sox and a guy who should be a really good um, clubhouse presence. So they finally added a, what, what should be a valued bat and a guy who, at least for now anyway, projects to be their nearly everyday designated hitter. Um, now, the broader picture of all that, is it enough? I, I would suggest no, it's not. I mean, this is a team that was starved for offense last year, and it's almost as if... Um, the front office has resigned itself to the fact that the major improvements in this offense are going to have to come internally. And, and by that, we mean Vlad Guerrero Jr. is going to have to have a big season. Alejandro Kirk is going to have to have a much better season than he did last year. And you hope that Dalton Varsho, comfortable in Toronto after a year here, will start to have a presence at the plate. Um, Justin Turner will be a guy who will be, you could project in the middle of that order and can certainly um, drive in a lot of runs. That seems to be his forte. He can hit for a little bit of power, but he's a doubles machine often and, and can drive guys in. So that was certainly what, what was missing in the offense last year, the the ability to get timely hits. And that was that's sort of one of Justin Turner's forte. So yeah, overall, a decent signing um, in isolation, but in the broader picture, not enough for this team. So like you said, since it's not enough for the Blue Jays here as they try to put together this roster, you know, what could be left? There are still some pretty big names out there, whether it be a J.D. Martinez or a Jorge Soler. And in the top tier, you've got Cody Bellinger, who maybe seems unlikely at this point. But what moves could be left here for Ross Atkins, in your opinion, Rob? Well, you know, Rob, you and I have discussed this. We've, we've always sort of thought Soler was, was going to be a prime target. And I suppose Matt Chapman is a possibility to bring back at, at third base. But, uh, you know, the sense would be that the, the price might be a little bit dear for those guys and, and that the Jays are, are, are hoping that, that they're going to get some improvement internally, like we, we mentioned, and that there's going to be more opportunity for players already in the system. Guys like Davis Schneider, who, who made a debut last year so spectacularly. Um, Spencer Horowitz, maybe Aurelvis or Martinez. Maybe that's the route that they've decided to go. And, and hope for the best and hope for internal improvement and then reassess as you get closer to the trade deadline. Um, as I wrote today in the Toronto Sun, this was always, once you got past the Shohei Otani situation, this was always going to be an underwhelming off season, mainly because there weren't a, a lot of great opportunities out there for Blue Jays GM Ross Atkins. And, and certainly that's the way it's played out so far. And it wouldn't shock me if, if, it, if this is where it ends. Well, as always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below or send us an email at torontobluejays at postmedia.com for all of Rob's Blue Jays coverage. Head over to the Toronto Sun.